So before we get to vocals, let's talk a little bit about overall automation, all right? It's why you see so many faders in front of me. I constantly, at this point before vocals, will start automating as many things as I can. I'll put all my tracks in touch, and I'll just start nudging, you know, little things to emphasize certain things, and more importantly, just so things don't stay stagnant. So here's our reverse drums, where as you can see, I'm just doing little lifts, you know, very, very subtle. Here's our reamped bass, where I'm doing the same thing. I'm fading it in, in places, boosting it in other places. Here's our bridge piano, where aside from doing a lot of pan automation, I'm also doing a healthy amount of volume automation, really making these chords flow in a specific way. On our hard piano, bus, we have a feeling of urgency, and that's being created with these rides. Check this out. So that's Korea, and this one's even more exaggerated. So that's giving us feelings of out, right? Urgency. We want to create urgency, especially in these little sections that just pop up for a second. We want them to be noticeable in a cool way. As well as effects. Here is my reverb on this guitar track, which I'm bringing in and out. Here is me cutting low frequencies and automating EQ. Butch Jones, who's my mentor when it comes to engineering and mixing, instilled this in me at a very young age. Things need to be moving at all times, rioting things. And that's the beauty of having faders. I don't want to sit here with a mouse and feel things. I want to sit here with my hands and touch physical things and feel them as I'm moving them or backing away from them. And I'll probably go through the song maybe four or five times with everything on touch mode and just make moves that just feel good and make things feel like they're transitioning from section to section um, before I do vocals. And then obviously after all my vocal automation, I go back to the music track and do the same thing. The first vocal we recorded in this song was actually the hook, the blah, blah, blah chant. And before we listen to what it sounds like, let me give you my few tricks on how I record gang vocals. What I do is I set everyone up in a room with two nice sounding room mics spread out. And here's the cool trick. I leave headphones on. So if they're just sitting on chairs or hanging up or sitting on the floor, I leave the bleed coming through the headphones, but I ask people not to put the headphones on. And I do that because I don't want them hearing themselves or the track while they're doing the chant. I just need them to know when it comes in and then I want them to feel their internal pulse for the actual part itself. That ends up making a little bit of a mess, but just the kind of mess that you need for big group vocals to sound big because you can double a vocal a hundred times and spread them all over and put reverb on it. Eventually it will start to sound like one sound. So moving people around the room, not giving them very good monitoring situations helps. It's a quick little trick that I just ask people to trust me when they're doing it. Blah, blah, blah. So here's what we're looking at, and they were recorded really cleanly. No processing on any of them, except I am spreading all of them. So one, left, two, right. Three, left, four, right. All the way down till 12, which is how many we have. And they're all going to blah hook, which is our bus. All right, so on our chain, very first thing we have is VMR. Let's see what it's doing. Blah, blah, blah. Cool, healthy amount of compression. Definitely adding some edge in there at uh, between three and four K taking out some lows that we don't need. After that, I have a rematrix reverb with a very, not very much of a wet signal. Blah, blah, blah. All right, so it's a very narrow room. So what it just did for me was kind of glue the sides together a little bit. One more time. Blah, blah, blah. Very subtle. 
After that, we have our trusty SSL stereo bus compressor, some more compression. Blah, blah, blah. Cool, and that's bringing out the reverb. Um, as you can see, our attack is super slow, our ratio, we're not really going too heavy with it. So listen to the reverb at the end without the compressor, and then I'll put it on. Blah, blah, blah. Got it? So the compressor is really enhancing the reverb more than anything. Cool. After our bus compressor, we're adding a little bit of attack and less sustain for some pokiness. Blah, blah, blah. So we're really emphasizing the Bs. Blah, blah, right? Here's without. Blah, blah, blah. And then with. Blah, blah, blah. Emphasizing those Bs energy. Once again, our cheap reverb, our silver verb. Blah, blah, blah. Cool, so that's just giving us a little bit more depth. Not too much, very subtle. And then we have the last thing in our chain is this moving doubler, the doubler two by waves. Check this one out. Blah, blah, blah. So it's feeling like there's a few more voices in there. It's really just giving it a movement though. Here's without. Blah, blah, blah. Here's with. Blah, blah, blah. Subtle movement. After that, we're sending it out to our Valhalla Vintage Verb Chamber. Blah, blah, blah. And that's giving us back our spread. So here we go. Clean. Blah, blah, blah. And then processed. Blah, blah, blah. And then in the track. So before we start breaking down lead vocals, harmonies, background vocals, I want to play you just the vocals isolated. Dress me like a doll And I'll just stand there back against the wall It's gonna be a good year Rise before the fall It's just your opinion it's only an opinion. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. So the reason I wanted to show you that before we dive into the dry signal and what it became was because I have my lead vocal right up front. And we have Dress Me Like a Doll, right? We have that first line. And then I, I almost wanted it to feel like a call and response. So we put this double on the left. And I'll just stand there. And that double is being affected in a certain way, different than the lead vocal. And then we have stereo vocals come in for a different feeling, and then it goes right back into the lead vocal. So we're kind of doing this thing where I want people focus in on that center vocal, but then when we have other lines and other feelings, I like placing them in certain positions because I like treating vocals, especially background vocals, doubles, harmonies, I like treating those as if they're another instrument. So I do like moving them out and hearing them in different places. So let's break down the lead vocal. Dress me like a doll And I'll just stand there back against the wall Yes, that is an 11 year old with an incredible tone And as you can see, no digital trickery happening here um, Vocals were recorded with a Telefunken AK-47 Going into the Universal Audio LA-610 I like to EQ and compress when I'm going in, so I don't have to do too much in the box. I also want to point out that on my vocal bus, and this, this goes for all my vocals, I'm sending them through the Oxford inflator, and it has this effect percentage. When it goes up, to me, it seems like it affects more high frequencies. When you go down, it affects more lower frequencies. Um, and it's a little bit of soft clip limiting, I think. I'm not exactly sure. I like what the plugin does a lot. It's great on vocals. Um, give it a try. 
All right, so our lead vocal, first thing in the chain, we have a pro cue, all right? Very standard, we're doing a low cut here because we don't need anything under here, right? Let's listen. All I'm hearing there is her stomping her foot in the room. We don't need that, okay? All this felt good in the mids. I am bringing out 3K, and if you go back to one of the other videos, I was ducking 3K out of things. I went as far as notching 3K out of some things. I did that knowing that I could boost this on the vocal, and the vocal's gonna sit, bam, right front, up and center. And that's, here's just the, the tone of that frequency soloed. Dress me like a doll, and I'll just stand there by and that's giving us a little bit extra presence as well. And then I'm cutting right before 10K. Let's hear what that's doing. Cool, so my faders that are all moving around are actually louder than what I'm taking out. However, it's one of those whistle tones again. You throw a compressor in, you don't, and you don't get those frequencies out, you're screwed. You're gonna be sitting around wondering what the hell is going on for a few hours. So not much EQ on the vocal, very, very straightforward. After that, we have a de -esser. What's it doing? Dress me like a doll. It's de -essing. great. And then after that, we have our trusty Logic IO plugin, because we are going through the distressor. I'm gonna say it again, my favorite compressor ever. On the distressor, we have a two to one ratio. Uh, on the detector side, we have a high pass filter. And then on the audio side, we also have another high pass filter. And the reason I'm using that is because on this vocal track, I'm using the distortion mode three. Um, I can't give you the specifics um, as to what distortion three does, but the way I use my distressors are, if I want a little bit of grit, I put on distress, uh, distortion two. If I want a little bit more grit, I put on distortion three. And then depending on how hard you hit it is when you actually start getting some really cool harmonic saturation. Um, our other settings on our compressor for this vocal, uh, we are driving it a little hot at eight. The attack is also at eight. Release is at six. And then our output's at four. Press me like a doll. Press me like a doll. So we're, not only are we taking off a lot of gain reduction, but it's giving it a movement and an energy that I like a lot. One more time with the compression on. Dress me like a doll. And again, I'm using the compressor as a rhythmic thing. The release, dress me like a doll. I really want, I like compression moving in that way. And then I use my attack knob to control how much I want it to hit really quick. So if someone has a lot of transient or sibilance, I might make that attack a little faster. It's pretty much in the middle on this track. From there, we have some space. We are sending out to Spring Age, uh, which is another reverb by Overloud. This is their spring reverb. I'm using it right in the middle. So it's a mono verb. Dress me like a doll. Yeah, it's doing a lot. So it's a loose spring. Here it is off. Dress me like a doll. Back in. Dress me like a doll. So why did I choose a spring reverb here? Well, number one, it's in style and I'm making a pop record, right? Um, but number two, it's giving it like a metallic kind of quality that I kind of dig. You know, her voice is so smooth and so pleasant to listen to. This metallic thing kind of gives it an energy that I think complements it pretty well. And then we're also sending out to our Valhalla chamber. Here's what that sounds like. Dress me like a doll. Nice decay, little pre-delay. Cool. So here's our clean vocal as we started. Dress me like a doll. And here's where we ended up. Dress
kiss me like a doll. Most importantly, in context. Dress me like a doll. And I'll just stand there back against the wall. Cool. So that's our lead vocal one. So for our lead vocal two, we have the same exact settings, except this time I'm using my other distressor, distressor two, and I'm hitting it differently because this is where all the choruses are and a lot of call and response things, which I want to be more aggressive. So we're hitting the compressor harder with a four to one ratio, same high pass on the detection side. I'm using a little less grit on the distortion mode. I'm using distortion two because we're going into the compressor hotter at four to one, we didn't need extra distortion. Our input's at five, our attack's at three, our release is at two, and our output's at four again. So very different compression setting than our, than our verse. Same reverbs, let's listen to that. I got a dress right, too baggy, too tight. All I hear is blah, blah, blah. Cool, so if you're listening closely, you'll also realize that there is a good amount of automation going on. There's a few things happening here. I'm automating the Valhalla, so it's not just sitting there. We also have an H delay on this track. Here's what this sounds like. I gotta dress right, too baggy, too tight. And if I pull up the automation lane for the Valhalla, you'll see what I'm doing here. I gotta dress right, too baggy, too tight. So obviously it's a stylistic thing, right? But why? the reason I'm doing that is because we have a call and response vocal coming in directly after that. And I felt like it would blend the two in a really cool way. Like one voice is disappearing off in the distance as one is coming in strong. And it actually makes that other vocal feel like it's coming in stronger. So a little bit of subliminal playing around there. Here's what that sounds like. I got a dress right, too baggy, too tight. All I hear is blah, blah, blah. A bit of makeup, a bit of good luck. All I hear is. So just playing around a little bit with it. And then at the end of the chorus, we have our H delay. Looks like it's increasing with some feedback. Blah. Okay, moving on, we have our lead vocal double, which I have panned off to the left with a fair amount of plug-in activity. I'll just stand there. Cool. What do, we got, what do we got going on there? We're using the Butch Vig plug-in again. Now, here's a really cool trick that I like a lot. I'm using a sample delay here, and I'm just delaying it by 395 samples so that the lead vocal is basically a little bit behind this one. And I'll just stand there by. And that makes it stand out a little bit more as a, as a double and as an effect than just them being perfectly in sync together. And then I'm using a tape delay for some slap. I'll just stand there. After our slap back delay, we're opening up spring reverb on it for the bridge where this becomes a lead vocal. All I hear. In context. All I hear. All I hear. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. So that's our lead vocal double. After our lead vocals, we have some stereo vocals. So here they are. Clean. And on and on and on and on. Cool. So the lead vocal actually drops out here, and there is a harmony on our lead vocal too that sounds like this. And on and on and on and on. Cool. So on these stereo vocals, let's see what we have going on. First thing we have on these vocals are a Pro-Q2, nothing exciting going on on there. 
After that, we have this Greg Wells voice centric plugin. So let's listen without and then with. And then on and on and on and on. Here it is with. And then on and on and on and on. It's one of those magic boxes. Sounds good. Why not use it? Um, at some point in the song, I must have heard some sibilants that I didn't like because we had deessers on them. And then, once again, here's the difference between left and right, why we're making them feel pretty wide. Uh, the vocal on our left, we're cutting a ton of highs out. So let's just listen to that one. And on, and on, and on, and on. And in the vocal on the right, we are not cutting anything. And then on, and on, and on, and on. That difference in EQ is what's going to make them feel outside the speakers. Here they are. And then on and on and on and on. And even though we lose a little top end, when we put our lead vox 2 in with our harmony. And then on and on and on and on. It kind of balances everything out. On these stereo vocals, we also have some sends. We are using H delay. We are using something called build verb. And that's basically an H verb with a big ramp. And then after that, we have another spring reverb. The vocal on the left is the same, except it doesn't have the build verb. And then on and on and on and on. So instead of me going in and automating on and on and on and on and on volume, I'm letting the reverb do it for me, which is really cool. And then the fun stuff is I'm using this glitch plugin again, except this time it looks like it's bounced. Um, but I'm actually using it right here. Check these vocals out. Let's just solo the vocals. I eat too heavy, too light. A better man. Make up the luck. Make sure I act right. No fighting tonight. All I hear is blah, 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 blah. Cool. In context. I Cool, so not much processing going on on the vocal. And reason being, they're recorded well, and Juliana's got such a great tone that I don't really want to mess with it too much. Because it's also her debut single, I have to be really cautious about how much work I do to that vocal because this is essentially her introduction to the world as an artist and as a singer. This is what people are going to use you know, 10 years down the line and say, oh, this is when I found out what Juliana Wilson sounded like. So I really couldn't go much further and make her sound like something she isn't, nor would I want to do that because I love the tone of her voice. And yes, she really is 13 and she was really younger when we recorded this. Okay, for me, the most important thing when it comes to vocals is automation. Let's open up our automation lane. You can see that I definitely spent some time going through these vocals. So let's play the track down and I'll kind of zoom into things, point to things. You know, I think that I don't have to solo things. I think that if you just listen and watch, you'll be able to hear certain things a little bit more. And this is also the last opportunity for you to hear the rest of the song. Here we go. When I'm not asking how thick is my skin When I'm reacting how much does it sting To hear your opinion
Dress me like a doll And I'll just stand there back against the wall It's gonna be a good year Rise before the fall It's just your opinion It's only an opinion Blah, blah, blah There's something I see on forums all the time that's meant to be a joke, but I know for a lot of people it's not. And it's the question of when a mix is really done. For me, in the real world, as someone who does this for a living every single day, the mix is done when the client says it is. Now, I have to be honest. Two weeks before this song came out, I thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown. I thought that the mix could have sounded better. I thought that it could have been cleaner. I did a lot of remixing. We tried different mastering engineers. Ultimately, nothing that we did had the same mojo that this mix had. And I'm glad that I chose mojo over what was me being a little crazy, because when Pop Matters premiered this debut single, the only thing they said about the production was how fitting it was to the song, how fitting the rawness was to what the artist was trying to convey. If you take anything away from this entire series, I hope that it's the fact that you as a producer, mixer, engineer, you're another person in that chain of helping someone convey a story. It's not about perfection. Sometimes it's actually the opposite. Let the song itself dictate the choices you make, keep it honest, and keep it real. Gotta look right, too heavy, too light 